What's going on guys, my name is Hussein and welcome to another episode of Wireshark Them All and today we're gonna Wireshark Rabbit MQ. So we made a video about Rabbit MQ guys, check out that course discussing this tech, discussing this beautiful message queue that uses the advanced message queue protocol and uh, as we did with the previous uh, episode with Wireshark we're going to establish a connection between a client, which is this Node.js application that connects to an advanced message queue protocol server, which is a RabbitMQ server in this instance that I spun up in a cloud-based architecture. And I'm going to make another video showing you how did I, how I did that. It was literally two clicks. I love this stuff. And the reason I needed to do that because I cannot run a, uh, RabbitMQ locally on my Mac and run Wireshark the same machine because I, I won't capture those packets, right? And uh, yeah, so how about we jump into it, guys? So here's what I have. I have a RabbitMQ server running on the cloud and uh, I am, this piece of application literally connects, creates a channel and I described in that video what a, what is the difference between a connection and a channel, right? It's like in HTTP2, you have the connection and streams, very, very similar, right? And then uh, I'm not sure who came up with this idea first. <laughs> so yeah, similar like even SSH, same thing, right? Their idea of connection and channel so we can allow multiplexing essentially. All right, so the channel, and then what we do here is we create a channel, and then immediately in this channel, we create a queue, and then we send a job to the queue, and this is basically whatever we pass in in the, in the, in the buffer. Uh, I'm going to say hi, for example. And that's it, and just we print something, and then immediately we close the channel, we close the connection, and I'm going to capture the whole thing, right? How about we jump into it? So create a brand new terminal, do node, publisher.js that's the file and uh, the source code will be available guys for you i'm gonna say hi boom so he's gonna know. it just prints it and immediately quits so let's go to wireshark and see what we captured here's wireshark guys and i did a filter just so i can only filter between my server my ip address client and the server, which is, uh, that's the, wh wherever this thing is, I just pinged the host and then got the IP address and literally filtered it. And so let's go, let's go through all this garbage. <laughs> let's see if we can explain all that stuff, guys. How about we do that? First three things, guys. We know what this is, right? This is the client is start with 10 and the server is 72, just for simplicity. We know these, what these three things are, right? Sin, Sinac, Ack. That's the three-way handshake to establish a TCP connection. That's just to prove that uh, RabbitMQ uses TCP. And that's not bad. That's just something we need to be aware of. So that's the three-way handshake to establish the TCP connection, right? Then we know that uh, Sin, Sinac, and Ack. And here's the first content that the client sends. Protocol header says, hey, uh, since the RabbitMQ uses the advanced message queue protocol, the first thing it sends is, hey, I'm using the advanced message pro queue protocol, right? And uh, this is my minimum version. This is my maximum version, version 1.9, whatever, right? 0.9, actually, right? That's the version of the AMQP, 0.9.1, right? And uh, the server acknowledges that packet. And then once we acknowledge that packet, it says, okay, I got your request and now I think we're good. Let's establish a logical connection. And that's, uh, look who's who's initiating this. It's very interesting, guys, right? That was, I believe, a result of the connection when we created the connection, right? The first thing. But the server responds like, okay, I'm ready to establish the connection for you, right? So now it establishes, it's just to us, at that level, it's just a bunch of data, well, to the to the TCP stack. But we're sending connection.star, and look at how beautiful this thing is. Wireshark actually shows us this stuff. It actually dec doesn't decrypt, it's just, it's already plain text. I'm not using any encryption here. So it knows, it says, hey, this is the version, this is the capabilities, and that's all the things I support, and 
Here, let's start the connection. And the client acknowledges that request, that packet, and then this, the client now sends its version of connection start okay. I'm happy with everything you did, server. Here's the things I support. Uh, here's my configuration. And let's go ahead and establish a connection, right? So technically, if you think about it, we have a TCP connection, but this is the logical advanced message queue protocol that, where that rabbit in queues is to establish a, phys a logical connection on top of the physical TCP connection. The server says, okay, let's tune things a little bit, right? And you might say, why do we need to tune if we can we do the tuning in this? That's kind of a, um, optimization that the advanced message queue can do, do, I guess. But for some reason, we're doing it in another step, but sure. So I'm doing a tuning and here's the thing, channel maximum, right? The server says, I only support 200 channels and that's a good idea for uh, for a cloud application because they don't want to make it in like a thousand channels otherwise they they're going to deplete a free I'm going to using the free tier right and this is the maximum frame size if each each frame that you send that's the maximum I can support and here's the heartbeats like we're going to ping each other every 120 seconds to see if we are alive or not right so that's the thing so the server, the, the client acknowledges that packet, that connection tune, and then the server, the client sends back connection tune okay. And here's the thing. The client agreed on the 200, the ag client agreed on the heartbeat, but he didn't agree on the frame max. He says, okay, dude, your frame max is so big, son. I'm going to only send you four, 496. That's the only thing I um, support. Awesome. Awesome. So the server says, acknowledges that. And now we're actually opening the connection. See, we didn't even start this thing yet. So we're opening the connection. And this thing is like, look at this. This is now the client actually opening the connection. That was just starting the connection. Now we're actually opening the connection for to send to send data. We acknowledge the server acknowledges that connection open. And then the server sends back a connection open OK. So if we get any errors, we will see these errors. And uh, yeah, it even sends back non-hosts. That's If it's null, I guess that's the only host that supports in case if you want to do like a load balancing or stuff like that. Uh, client acknowledge that. Now, channel open. Let's look at the code. We're right here, guys, now. <laughs> all of that stuff was here, right? Now we're here, okay? Line 13. Look at that stuff. <laughs> now the client opens a channel, and, and the channel, what is a channel? This is, is like a strip in a connection that we allow uh, basically multiplexing, right? So we can have multiple threads in the same process, multiple, sending in parallel multiple packets on the same TCP connection, right? So this is a great idea. And people have been doing it for years. Retransmission, something happened here, apparently. The client retransmitted some packet that had been lost or because either we didn't get an acknowledgement or something bad happened, right? So it's sent back. And the server replies with share channel channel open let's open let's go ahead and open that connection and we we don't have a channel id for some reason right and uh yeah looks like i have not specified a channel id i have an option if i want to to i believe to specify a channel id huh hmm. maybe maybe not i remember there was like an uh, idea to specify a channel id but looks like uh there isn't hmm. never mind acknowledgement from the client that we received the channel open and here's the thing guys we're declaring a queue now the client is about to create a new queue that's the queue right this is it we're asserting the queue so we can create a new queue on the server and since i created this before that queue already exists so uh, a bunch of free transmission. We're going to ignore this stuff, right? Because uh, that's what happens when you connect things to the internet. Dupe acts, stuff like that. And then we come back, and then he's like, queue 
declare okay that's the from the server says okay i got you this queue already exists and uh go ahead and this is we have nine messages in the queue <laughs> in this currently because i i used this queue before to do stuff in it uh the client acknowledges the queue and here's the thing we're gonna publish now we are where we're sending content we're sending the high which is this is two letters right two letters two characters right let's let's see if this is, is actually there and the payload where's the high there you go i actually send a json it says number high why is it number high let's see what, what did i do i forgot what i did a code oh look at that i'm sending a json of message object what is this oh there you go look at this i'm sending i forgot i wrote this code a long time ago so it's a, it's a json object with a number i'm supposed to be numbers but for some reason i sent high sure right so we're sending a json number and high right <laughs> doesn't matter guys you get the idea all right so we're sending that and now we're acknowledging the server acknowledges that we got the publish and now here's the cool thing guys the client closes the channel right right here we're closing the channel but the server didn't respond with anything and that's a very very interesting thing guys right if uh, because when you publish something, and that's one powerful feature in advanced message queue protocol, when we publish, the only thing we need to know that our content has been published to the queue is this puppy, the acknowledgement, and that's it. That's a lower level thing that we don't have control as developers, as programmers, backend engineers. We don't have any control over this thing right so it's just the moment we get the acknowledgement we know it's 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 in the server and i don't really care about this the reply because we're publishing a queue it's going to be at the other end of the consumer to consume that stuff it's not our job anymore we close the connection the server acknowledges the close that the server closes the channel from its side right and then acknowledge the client acknowledges the close and then what is it so the client now physically let's say logically closes the connection right because you can open and close as many channels as you want while keeping the connection alive right you can have many channels in this damn tcp connection and no i shouldn't say tcp connection you can have many channels in this logical connection that is actually just one physical tcp connection does that make sense guys and then yeah we closes this poppy right the server the client says okay i'm done even with this uh, connection just like let's go ahead and close the connection right and uh, the server says okay here's the interesting thing this is the delayed beautiful acknowledgement part of this thing what happened here is when we closed it if the server can it start instead of acknowledging the close data packet it waits since i'm about to close it anyway let's wait let's not acknowledge that stuff and let's send you the data with the acknowledgement so if we look at the acknowledgement we say okay we're acknowledging this the same content right here right so if you look at this it should be the next number is 569 and if we look at the acknowledgement is also 569 so yeah we're acknowledging and sending the data that's the best thing that we can do if possible and that's where a good well-written server uh, it shines really right and that's the back end is written very well we're acknowledging and sending that data at the same time if we can do that low level thing we'll see great performance despite some dupes and stuff like that happen in the internet we cannot control that obviously but what happened here where the client acknowledges the close okay which is this response from the server and here's the thing who's initiating the close hmm the client is initiating the close awesome so if the client is initiating the close right and uh <laughs> look at that some error happened it got reset right so so far from test to multiple tests to rabbit mq i never seen a clean close of the tcp connection and i'm not sure why and we can dig deeper in, into this thing and I, I, 
I'm probably going to need some help from the network engineers because I don't know why these resets happen. But when the moment you see reset, that means something uh, wacky happened in the internet and, and uh, the packets went out of order and, and uh, we couldn't close the connection in a clean manner, so we reset. So to the client and the server, this is an error. We close the connection in error, despite me just closing it in neatly, to be honest, right? I just immediately opened and closed it, right? And uh, if I look at the code, I also awaited. I made the mistake of, the, I, I, I didn't have these puppies, right? I didn't have awaits. I mistakenly didn't that. And when you do, don't do that, since this is asynchronous code, we're gonna do that. And since this is asynchronous, we're gonna send the code and immediately go to the next thing and close the connection. We don't wait for a result from that, right? And then when, when you do that, bad things happen, man, right? Because you start closing the connection and, and before actually receiving content from the server, it's going to be uh, awful. All right, so that's uh, that's essentially RabbitMQ wireshark. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Give it a like, share it with your friends. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye. What should our wireshark next? Let me know in the comment section below. Goodbye.